Okay, so advantages of this. Well, first, when it dries, it will be matte. Okay, if it's not matte enough, you can heat it up and it became more matte. If not, you can also use some varnish and it will be even more matte. Take it with ultra, ultra matte varnish because it, it makes things very grayish. The good thing about this is that I have a base coat. Is a, is a, he could be like a South American guy, for example, or we can turn it, this into a normal, like a Caucasian skin tone with no problems. Maybe I'm affected by you. No? <laughs> yeah. Your sexiness is, uh, is amazing <laughs> and inspire my, my artworks. You know, uh, this is everything all related with, with the palette. The palette, as you see, is, is full of, well, makes sense, no? It's full of oranges, mm -hmm. yellows. So everything will look very brownish, very dry, you know, and it's a kind of skin tone. So this could be, but because this is a class about doing skin tones and modifying skin tones, we can easily change the tone instantly. You see? Yeah. With that dwarf. Dwarf skin tone. So I can instantly change if I don't like what I did. And there is not is not a problem because well first first of all if the sculpt is like this one that is pretty flat, I mean, it has not texture, it, it, it looks rendered, it looks, it's obvious that it's a 3D. That is the only thing that I don't like that much, that is a little bit too artificial. Uh, so, somehow the, the, the brush strokes and the different layers and the different layers of, of noise <coughs> will give a more natural appearance as well, because you are breaking these uh, symmetry, this uh, smoothness that is a little bit maybe too much to my taste, obviously this is a matter of personal taste, some people will be uh, Can anything. you uh, talk a bit about your brush selection does the type of brush you use matter at this point, are you looking for the biggest brush you can have? In this case I'm, I'm using a chisel brush, you call it like this right? Yeah, chisel brush yeah. I'm using a chisel brush uh, that they feel very comfortable with it because it's the one is is my like one of my favorite ones. It's already a little bit ruined, and it's just to apply the colors quicker and distribute the paint in like flat, not with the, with a rounded one. You leave a different uh, kind of brush stroke. Mm -hmm. So I love rounded ones for defining, you know, mm. but for sketching or depending on the surface obviously because this is a very open surface you see how far how fast i can change completely yeah. the skin tone guys i hope this is useful guy, uh, for you uh, for you the viewers to see that nothing is fixed and that's why painting should be painting is is should be freedom you know it's it's a it's an exercise that that cannot cannot be a boundary never you know like if you don't like something, just change it. Makes sense? Makes yeah. sense. But you've still got the fear for someone like me. I think when, when, when I get blocked by painting, it's because I don't want to have to do it again because I don't know how to do it again. Bro, Which it, is, comes with the whole yeah. learning to well, color. But how do you check how fast it is to change? This is a matter of understanding how the colors react. Yeah, yeah. But if you know this, then everything else is, is easy. Yeah. Painting is easy. Painting is not, is not a difficult thing. What is difficult is to observe, is to analyze, to be self-critic, right? It's not a matter of how good you paint. It's not a matter of what is your, uh, what is your technical skills. Technical skill is something that every, any, a monkey can learn a technique. Okay. But the good taste, you know, the good decisions <laughs> is based on, obviously, talent, or, you know, and, and natural, uh, let's say, natural skills somehow but also observation, you know? The more you go to a museum, the more you consume 
cinema, photography, pictures, uh, for like illustration, classical art, whatever, sculpting, drawing, the more complex is your understanding. Make mm-hmm. sense? Mm-hmm. The, your problem in this case is that you don't study. Mm-hmm. Do do? So now the, the, um, the body is still fresh. You can see that it, it, it shines a little bit, right? Mm. So I can start quickly highlighting the volumes and I'm going to do this quite fast. Obviously this is a sketch so I I, I don't pretend to be like super subtle and super um, control and, and like to have perfect uh, tonal variations, perfect nuances. No, I'm just, I'm just discovering the piece, which is a, is a very interesting exercise as well, mm-hmm. to discover the piece. Uh, because if I am painting uh, my anonymous bust, I already know the piece, you know? I don't have to think. With this one, I have to tame the piece somehow. I have to discover the volumes and decide. I have not even thought about how I will, what I will do with this, how, how I will represent this character. I don't have a specific character in my, in my mind. This is just a freestyle exercise, which is something that I really suggest you to to do sometimes, because it's something that will help you to develop your skills much better. If you can describe the techniques, uh, like if this was a match or something. Football. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, what 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 kind of brush strokes? Because oh, you want us to, yeah? Or do you no, I mean, you are English, so you can say this is a glaze. This is a. All oh, right, blimey. Well, well, then. well, the paint at the minute is still fairly thick. You seem to be tracing the outline, um, so it's still quite a. It's not a glaze. It's still quite a heavy application. So it's just basing. Is a base coat yeah, uh, right, dilution it? more no a little bit less. Yeah. It's more like a half. Again. It's more or less something like this. Yeah. yeah. So it has certain yeah. transparency. Yeah. But the technique though. But it's thick. Yeah. So I can move around with the brush. Is this even, this is just painting, though. Yeah, but the actual the technique from the brush is there's nothing. It's just normal. Mm. It's my, well, I suppose every now and then you seem to do cross hatching. Mm. But you obviously they picked up on it. You've moved to a smaller brush now. Yeah, I didn't. From here on the screen, right? That's, that's tell me. you reflect what I'm what, what am I doing then I can know if you are grasping let's have a little look oh, you got a good view here very nice so now you're connecting the lights so you've done the, the bridge of the nose the eyebrows and the forehead and you're connecting those lights to the cheek the upper lip the top half of the chin is this a visual or just an audio explanation? They're watching you through there. <laughs> That's what I meant. I guess this is, um, what's that thing called? You're now... Putting your p- <laughs> touch of the palette with your brush. You're now patching to a degree, pulling <laughs> that colour towards the centre of the forehead. I am creating like colour blocks. Yeah. That's what I was after, colour blocks. This is the thing that's the hardest thing to do in this industry, right? <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, well, I but this is, this is hard for me. Uh, like, I think, I don't know what, how other artists, maybe I'd be curious to know how other people in the patron can, surely this isn't that common. I don't see many people doing this, or I never see posts of people, what was it called, colour patch? This is like a cell shading, cell shading. Or, or color block. I, well, I don't know what's the real name in English, but well, this is nothing. This is nothing 
mm. uh, new. But, I mean, but why does everything is taken from, some, from somewhere. I mean, those are like classical yeah. illustration techniques. Yeah, yeah. Just really hard to do when you've got no understanding of volumes. But this is, this is what we're learning. You're better at this than me, right, Rona? Who, who's better, Alfonso? I'm not gonna say this in front of the camera. Bro. No, add, add cell shading at color blocking. Between whom? You uh, and Lionel? Yeah. Probably Lionel. Thank you. I don't know why I'm happy about that, but it's true. I think your understanding of volumes is better. So but you're better at, at doing weird questions. <laughs> I'll take that. So now you change the mixture to more of a mid tone? And you're going into the shadow area, or highlighting the shadow area. I am. I am traveling. Um, let's do this. I am traveling through this. Mm -hmm. You know, you see how big it is. Yeah. That keeps it alive, because any liquid starts drying from the edges. Okay. Right. So that that keeps things alive for long, much longer, right? And what I'm doing is like selecting, like for example, I pick this color. And then I, wh where can I apply this? Uh, maybe here. It's a mid tone. It's very reddish. Mm -hmm. It's too reddish. But what, now that it's still wet, I take something that is not so red and I reduce it. So I apply always what I have on the brush and then I, I adjust. And every time I have something on the brush, I apply somewhere. That's a great way to uh, keep the harmony. to keep the harmony and keep everything connected and, and, and also keep on track what you're doing on the palette. So most of the people that they have troubles with the palette and they say, no, oh, Alfonso, but you know, I prefer like <coughs> pre-made colors because, um, well, basically because they are lazy, is <coughs> is because they have not seen the benefits of understanding and controlling the palette. Mm. But it's a, it's a steep learning curve, I think, because if you look at my palette and how I'm adding colours, it becomes one big mess. Like, you, you can control the palette, but it takes time to control the palette. Well, obviously, bro, I mean, I've been yeah. painting professionally for 15 years, mm. no? Yeah. If, if someone thinks that you can, I mean, obviously, you can, resu you can have results in two days. You go to any master or good painter he, he teach you he drive your hand like this goes here this goes here without explaining you anything uh like many people does and then at the end you have the same result but have you painted this no and i think more importantly can you replicate it by yourself probably not the, exactly like the next day when 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 it when it comes another uh, project, another challenge with different volumes, with different interpretations, you don't know what to do. And I've seen this so many times with so many people, you know, that seems that they, they go to, to a class with, with anybody. Mm. The result they post on social media is like, look what my student does, it's exactly the same as, as what I do. So you're basically telling that a professional of, let's say 10 years, eight years, five years of experience paint exactly the same as a student that has never touched a brush in his life. So that means that replicating is easy. If I don't explain you anything and I tell you where to place things by imitation, you can, you can easily get results. But at, at least how I understand teaching is not about this. It's about you to understand what you are doing and why, mm -hmm. so that then you can create your own style, you can create your own mm -hmm your own method, your own understanding of it, right? Otherwise you are just a copycat, you know? And it's not bad to be a copycat if you like, if you like to replicate what some, some others do, it's good. But you will never uh, be able to understood without guidance, that, that, that is the point. So coming back to what you were saying, you say, oh, uh, mixing is difficult for me mm -hmm. because you have not practiced enough. Mm -hmm. Same with the palette. Because this is not uh, like uh, like doing astrophysics or something like this, you know? It's well, just mixing ingredients. It's like cooking. Yeah. Being a master chef, for sure, is difficult, but it's so more than anything else, it has a lot of hours of work and experience, right? Mm. 
Mm. And then obviously you can have talent too, but you know, the way that I throw the ingredients on a, on a cock pot is the same. Is not the word? No. <laughs> <laughs> Cooking pot. Yeah. I like Cooking the old pot. one. Though. Okay, the old one is that. Okay, so the way the. <laughs> 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 Sorry, guys. The way that you throw. Uh, I laughed. David, I think he said olla de pollo. Are you going to remove the cock pot? I don't know. Maybe. So, I mean, the way that you uh, throw ingredients in a, in a pot, right, to, to cook, uh, is the same as a, any chef, master chef, right? It's the same. The, the difference is the knowledge that the guy knows, don't mix these two ingredients because they will make the stew bitter, mm. for instance. If you don't know, you can be tempted to check to mix ingredients in the wrong way. Mm. But if you know the stage, the, the steps that you have to follow, you will come up with a. What is the difference between a master chef and someone that just cook well? Everything else, the experience, no, the presentation, the, the this this little touch, this investigation. Big chefs, what they bring is that they make combos that no one expected. But then after they have released that, every copycat that do the same dish, probably is not the same taste, but it will be okay. Mm. So what is the value? The value is the first one who do this, or, or maybe you, it's not the first time you do this, but you add something yours, so it's more personal, right? So anything can be masterized if you spend hours and hours and hours, but obviously you have to study, right? Because this is a sketch and I don't want to uh, extend too much. I'm going to focus a little bit, right? You remember Lionel, the, the skull? The skull and, and then here, you see how I'm drawing the jaw so that it can be seen from the front. And then intermediate tones every time i select a, a color i apply everywhere i feel it can be useful make sense yeah. and this connects everything that you're doing so everything belongs to the same exercise obviously we're not using any airbrush so we are more limited because with airbrush you multiply the amount of techniques that you can use. Let's pick some black. <laughs> so basically, I'm I'm caressing the surface and I am like doing loops, searching for a tone. Right? Nothing is defined right now, but you can perceive already the volume. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you can see the skull, you can see that poor chest, which is huge. It's like, looks like a, like a giant. It's like the, the to me is the worst part of the figure. This um, this method, I appreciate you'll need a smaller brush and a, a closer eye for it, but you can use it on standard 28 mil models if you wanted to. Mm, the bigger, the easier. The problem with 28 mils is that you need to be careful because otherwise you will ruin the details quickly you know with this it doesn't matter if you accumulate a little bit of paint it will not ruin the the, the experience right but it, 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 in a 28 is a little bit too aggressive okay. that's why i don't enjoy painting 28s because i have to be painting like this and also once once you became older uh, everything is worse now we're going to start defining <laughs> you mean comes worse it's harder to look at a model that damn small what you said when you get older everything becomes worse you mean well, obviously i don't see like yeah. when i was uh, 28 <laughs> and that's that's the reason i'm 36 and i've been forcing my my what my view my yeah, eyes my eyes for a long time that that obviously don't benefit and also it's not easy to to record because i cannot be like this yeah, yeah. so like this obviously i have much more precision, right? <laughs> so 
So now you're applying the shadows to... I'm, I'm applying like super strong shadows to define the expression. Do you think the, uh, the novice painter or the intermediate painter tends to not do contrast high enough? Yeah, that's the main yeah. issue of, uh, what do you say, new it? Uh, well, uh, yeah, I'm um, intermediate maybe, yeah. I don't know. I don't know what we are, we're not amateur anymore, but we're not at a level, so we're probably intermediate. Uh, you're not you're not amateur? No. Why not? Well, okay. You are um, amateur. Yeah, because we're not getting paid. So then <laughs> <laughs> So then you are amateur, right? Yeah. This is yeah, I mean you're you're, you're uh, absolutely right. I will start also adding tones so I can mix all <laughs> at once. The idea of painting like this is that you come up with a nice sketch that you can then you can work for years if you want quite quickly. So it might not be clear on the camera here, but what kind of thickness is that paint that you're applying now? Because you're actually putting, it's it, like look, it looks quite thin, but no, but it looks quite aggressive. You've got some quite aggressive red on your nose. And so what, what kind of thickness and consistency are you applying now? Medium thickness. I'm, I'm working almost all the time with the same thickness and the same, the same dilution. It's turning out all right. They, they integrate easily because they are creamy and the the surface is still not completely wet completely dry sorry so they interact quite easily among themselves that's why when when you get used to um, thicker paint like this you speed up your process a lot you've not added much water in oh you've used inks to control it okay and also if you add if you add water you're losing the strength yeah I'm just placing tonalities regarding the area. So once you place that red on, you took some more of the color that was on underneath it originally, did you? And then blotted on. Like top. for example, now imagine to bleed it in. Imagine I have, I have this red right, and I apply it. It will be alive and and, and wet for a while, right? Mm -hmm. Then I have the same color on the brush, and I take from any other place. So I'm creating immediately a mid tone in between that I can use to start blending right. and this is a wet blending technique is exactly the same as Ben Comets used to do with the uh, two loaded with the loaded brush it's the same it's the same thing different names same thing and you, you've not done the red to show that he's an alcoholic you've done it to give a life to the skin yeah or, or, or uh, maybe he's an alcoholic he's a very strong alcoholic not that's no implications on the I don't care. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not doing something specific right yeah. now. I'm it's just, just red for the life. It, I need. I need tonality. The problem of most of the faces is that they look toyish, mm -hmm. because they have no life. They have no tonal variations, because we have been told for twenty-five years that everything has to be completely smooth, like if we were dollies or something. And that's not true. It's like people has tonal variations. Mm -hmm. Mo many English people they have red red uh, areas mm. easily you know especially if they are very white myself you see now like this is more reddish look at my ears how reddish they are you know so there are millions of different tonal variations so there's not a specific reason and now i'm going to start defining now with this mix have you you've pushed the, the brightness up again you've added more white to the mix yeah is this one check how white it looks well here at least in person in the screen i think it looks a little bit more reddish and how constant this look almost like a dwarf skin tone from against worship all, all against worship or citadel right mm -hmm. and how bright it looks when I add it to, to the figure. Now the paint is starting to settle down. It means that it's starting to dry. So also I have a good terrain, a good um, ground to place color on top. Because it's not polished. It has rain, make sense? Yeah. It's not super smooth, it's texture. It has some texture. 
gonna f I'm going to follow a very simplistic interpretation. Because it has a scar. You see the scar? Yeah. I will rescue you. If 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 it was if I was the sculptor, I will never do a scar like this. Because it forced the the painter to to accept it, you know, all, all your characters should have a scar, basically. And I prefer to leave this to the imagination of the of the viewer. But well, if it's there, then you have obviously you have to paint it. So now I am creating the color of the scar with the same colors that I have here. So everything is all the same palette. Then my tracing has changed, you see? And my approach to the miniature has changed as well. Mm -hmm. Now I'm searching for micro volumes, right? And that means that I'm not, I'm, I'm not working from so close to the miniature, I'm working from far. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, the opposite. I'm not working from far, I'm working from close. From close? Yeah. Is well said? Close up. From, from close up? I'm working close up. I'm go oh, sorry, okay. so I'm working close up. I have to approach the miniature, and the way I hold the brush is is different. Now the movement is more like a finger movement rather than a wrist movement or a, a, an elbow or a shoulder movement, right? So depending in which stage you are, you can be more free and play around with brush strokes, or you can be more detailed. In this case, now we're entering in the refinement uh, moment. However, obviously. It's just a sketch again, but the kind of techniques that we are going to use right now are more focused on small areas and focused on uh, creating enough definition. resemble the school yes yeah. that's why the structure is also very important and, and you should learn how to recognize the structure of anything and the structure shouldn't be I mean not necessarily has to be um, an accurate um, anatomical structure if that makes sense it should be more like a volume structure you should be able to, it's like what they do in Pixar or in, in any um, cartoon movie, they create characters through basic volumes. Mm. If at some point the, the paint is uh, slipper, slippery? Uh, slippery? Slipping? Slip seat. If you are the act of you slipper, you say you Slip, slipper? Slipped. So if the paint slips, slipped? Slips, yeah. <laughs> Uh, then it means that you need to dry this this area so you can use a hard dryer and apply the paint dry apply the paint dry you know now I can trace even like the, the tip of the brush like this this is similar to some some of the brush strokes of Kirill Karaev or like this Marmas Clans as well or now as well this is these are more uh, refining um, brush strokes those are identifiable when you see a close-up of, uh, of, um, of any of these pieces you will see some of these brush strokes indeed the linear ones are the brush strokes that are more identifiable mm -hmm. what I'm doing guys what am I doing just mixing some white and blue for what reason yet I'm not sure a grey sort of All right. Uh, smart. Mm -hmm. Oh, all the nice. These are the sparks. Huh? Mm -hmm. Don't you know it's too strong? I bet you wouldn't imagine how strong it <coughs> would be. A bluey, gray, a bluish gray like this, because I'm creating contrast. Everything looks more or less reddish, orangey. So this will. <coughs> Mm. This will be something unexpected. So at the end, the brain understands as a super bright uh, contrast, right? Mm. When it's not really so bright, 
but it will make the effect strongerly than than if you use less let's say white or, or, or with a, with red for example like a pink or something like that this will create much more contrast the um the base skin is like a what's a brown but a more pinky brown how would you describe this <laughs> i don't remember no but what's on the model now i mean which one these colors the skin tone is kind yeah. of like tertiary tones they are browns yeah, yeah, yeah. I just wonder why it was so contrasting. I guess just because it's white. No, it's because of the blue. And the blue's contrasting with yellow. No, it's just different. What is the opposite color of blue? Yeah. It's yellow, isn't it? Seriously? Orange. Hold on. Wait, let me do my maths. <laughs> Orange. Oh. oh, purple's the opposite, isn't it? Good cast, guys. <laughs> Lionel, are you taking some conclusions from this or not? 